Hi there, I'm Frank Crenshaw. This is Frank's Plastic Modeling Page, and this is my continued build of the um, Trumpeter Seawolf Submarine in 1144 scale. I'm to a point where the model has been completely assembled, painted, and it has a base, base, base layer of paint on it. It's been primed. And I want to tell you, this model was very difficult to get to this state. This was not easy. Um, it was all basic modeling, but this model so bad, it required a lot of it. So this is truly one of those kits where you really, really have to pay attention to your basics to get it right. Um, it's a large model, so it's kind of hard to fit in the screen here. But as you can say it, see it has a sort of offish, grayish, dusty looking um, color to it. And that, that offish gray color that I created was uh, simply missing mixing Mission Models paint. Um, 20 to 1 of this Panzer Gray, which is already a fairly dark gray, to uh, um, one part, or actually five parts black. So if you divide it, it's five to one. So, um, but that, that worked out. And then I will use various different hues and lots of different other grays to, to start weathering this model. Not, not so much to weather it, but to try to make it look not like just a long black tube. Um, the camera doesn't pick it up maybe as well as the eye does, but this actually looks pretty good right here. I mean, just as a the the streaky, dusty nature of the way I painted it on, it actually looks pretty convincing. Um, and you'll notice it's very, very clean. Um, I again, I I spent a lot of time sanding and prepping this model, and that's uh, that's the that's what you get when you spend a lot of time prepping a model. You know, now I don't have to worry about it failing right right when I want to actually succeed. So all the basics work I did on this, I feel really good about. So anyway, the, the submarine's moving along and now I can start painting on it, which is actually my strength as a modeler. I'm, I'm probably best at painting. That's probably my best skill that I have. Um, one of the things that I did do on this sub, and I mentioned it in my video, and I wasn't sure I wanted to, to dive into the weeds, but I wound up diving into the weeds is I did in fact improve the propeller, the pro propulsor pump jet thing of the, of the actual, of the actual sub. Now this is, this is my latest version of the pump jet that I've just recently popped out of the uh, 3D printer, stuck a magnet in the end of it, and it will just stick on the end of the sub. This is a hybrid I made that was just a, a blade and it mounted to the uh, piece the kit gave and then this was the original kit blade so i i didn't i wouldn't say what i've done is research because this all this information is highly classified there there are people who will be able to tell if this is accurate or not but they won't be able to say they won't tell you it's accurate or not they'll have no comment um i used to work around nuclear weapons so i totally understand that um so, but I was able to find some Russian subs where I was able to see their pump jets. And uh, it's pretty clear that the Russians are copying what we're doing. So maybe our, theirs really aren't as different as ours. Plus, I did find some other references that, that this thing would be built perhaps this way. And an expert, you know, in the field of uh, maybe jet engines chimed in and said, you know, it's going to be supported on the end. You know, because that will reduce cavitation. So all all the figures really point to it not just being a prop in the in the in the shroud. It has to probably be a supported impeller. I did stick with the curved blades just because I wanted it to have that submarine look. And I actually sat through an online lecture from a from a person discussing uh, prop blade cavitation and how rings are used to remove the tip the tip cavitation of uh, turbine impellers. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if the real one doesn't have a ring around it. And the Soviet one certainly does. So uh, I added a ring. And uh, gee, that's, that's, that's why I did it. Anyway, a lot of work, but this is what you get. I think if you look at my first video, I, I have a picture of, of the trumpeter version of this. This was my next one. And, and this is painted up and weathered, and I really like how this looks. I can't wait to do that to the other one. Um, I will, in fact, make this blade very clean, though, because, you know, even though this has dents and stuff in it, which I think make it look really cool, as someone pointed out, a real sub probably wouldn't have that kind of damage to it because uh, 
the vibrations that would create would be kind of uh, disastrous if you're trying to stay silent. And I think he's got a valid point. Um, one thing I did do is I did add magnets to the tail end of it. So this pump jet can just fit right on and I have keyed it so that it will line right up right there and it is ready to go. My uh, bow plane or one of my planes fell off because they're not glued in yet. But anyway, that's uh, that's where we're at, and that's our progress. So now, now the uh, the thing that that I've been really, really, really envisioning when I when I first started building this, I can actually start doing, and that's going to be weathering. Now there are some details I could still add, but I don't really think I'm going to do that for this. Um, these these hatches, this hatch here and this this hatch here, are actually level, so that a deep submersible uh, docking, um, sa saving uh, life life pod or I'm not sure what they call it, but can dock to them. And uh, obviously these ones are round. Um, they made these landings on on all the subs so that so that that rescue vehicle whatever it is can actually dock on the sub. And I think most subs in the world have those. I'm not going to do that. I mean, I really just need to paint this and get this done. And so I can actually start working on something I really want to work on. But how I would do it was I would just 3D print some version of this um, so that it would just sit right there on the, on the, uh, on the part. And then I would just uh, blend it in with epoxy putty. But there's no way in hell I'm going to finish this model if I keep doing stuff like that. So, so I'm going to just call it good enough and I'm going to worry at work on that. Now I may do some extra details on these um, antennas and uh, th these sensor arrays that come out of this. I very well may do that. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I did, I did uh, basically hook the, the, the fin on with magnets. So I'll be able to pull this off. Now this model's large. This thing is big. I mean, one 200 scale for a sub is like really big so uh it takes up a lot of space so that's that's kind of cool i can easily more easily store it without worrying about damage it by having all these pieces removable so uh anyway that's my progress uh hope everybody else is having a good time in the build and i will uh hope everybody's holding out in this uh quarantine i know it's a tough time but just Hope everybody hangs in there and I guess count your blessings and let's uh, be as positive as we can. And modeling is certainly a place we can be positive. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.